Hello oh, and welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson we're going to look at some of the newer uh, selectors that are in CSS. Um, I'm kind of calling it CSS3, but that's just kind of a, a buzzword because some of these have actually been around since CSS2. However, browsers are only recently starting to implement them. So they're uh, selector techniques that you can use to uh, get to different parts of the page in more creative and advanced ways than you could in the past and in ways that you couldn't just a year or two ago. And it's really going to start taking off, especially with the launch of Internet Explorer 9. Um, it's really uh, sort of uh, catching up to all the other browsers and leveling the playing field. So the principle that I'm going to teach you before we even start looking at the new selectors in CSS3 um, is progressive enhancement. Um, the idea here is that you need to code your website so that it still works for browsers that can't support these new features. Um, so you need to write CSS that conforms to the standard and that works in browsers that are older. But then you have CSS that uh, kind of selectively gets dropped in for the newer browsers without breaking the functionality of older browsers. Um, because CSS isn't supported uniformly, um, it's not ever going to make your website, your website's never going to look the same in every browser. Um, and especially when you're using these advanced features, um, it's not going to look the same in older browsers as new browsers. Um, however, that's not a problem. Um, there's nothing on the internet that says your website needs to look the same in every device. In fact, it's the opposite. The most important thing is that the content is available to every device. Um, that's the idea be behind semantic HTML. Um, and then with CSS, you can kind of give different advances to different browsers, and that's what this is all about. So the other thing is that CSS3 is really quickly gaining traction. Um, I made this video in September 2010, and uh, we have Firefox 4 is in beta, Internet Explorer 9 is in beta right now, and um, in the next uh, few months, they're going to be coming out of beta, and uh, people are upgrading their browsers much, much more frequently than they have in the past. And so you may find that if you code your website with CSS3 in mind, progressively enhancing, that um, most of your users pretty soon are going to be able to take advantage of this. So I really recommend that you learn it because it's going to be very useful in the future. And in maybe just in a few years, it'll be across the board available to all browsers. OK, so the first thing to look at is the child selector. Um, so this is similar to just the regular space in uh, CSS syntax where you have just a space between your two elements in the rule. Um, however, um, instead of grabbing a descendant, this looks at uh, just a child. So um, what this syntax would say is find a div, which is a direct child of another div. Um, if this little uh, caret was not here, it would say find a div which is a descendant of another div, um, which means any level descendant. But the child selector specifically means that it's just one level down. It's a direct child. And this is actually very well supported everywhere except in Internet Explorer 6. This is kind of going to be a theme that Internet Explorer 6 is the, it's the only uh, what we might call modern browser um, that, that is kind of not supporting most of these things. You, you might think that that's really terrible, uh, the Internet Explorer 6, but Internet Explorer 6 was in some ways the first modern browser, um, so it's also the oldest modern browser. <laughs> um, but the problem is that a lot of people haven't upgraded from it yet. So you kind of have to keep in mind that uh, a lot of users still use Internet Explorer 6 and they're not going to be able to see the, uh, the things that you're doing with this if you're using uh, the advanced uh, rules here. So here's some code that we're going to use to demonstrate. And this is a, a page with just a lot of divs, nested divs, and um, just a long list of different divs with different types of, uh, of things going on. Um, this is, for example, this is a, a paragraph here. And um, up here we've got some block quotes with paragraphs inside them. And I'm just going to use this page to demonstrate the different ways to select and target different things. Um, so let's start with this, um, this child selector. Um, and I'm just going to change the background color of every div, which is a direct child of another div, to green. So um, these containing divs, 1, 2, and 3 here, 
um, are not direct children of any divs, so they are not, they're remaining gray. And then all these uh, first child divs are green as well. Um, and actually, these are first child divs as well, but they're gray. And I, I did this because I want to point out that um, because of my other rules up here, I've got uh, right here, this rule is the one that's conflicting. A, a div which is just a regular descendant of a div has this background color. So there's actually a conflict and these are uh, uh, staying green. Now this is three levels and it's, that means it's more specific than just the two here. Um, the fact that I'm using an advanced CSS3 selector doesn't mean that this is more specific than this. If you use the count, this is three elements to two elements. This is one more specific. And so because there's three divs here, the levels that are th three deep, so one, two, three, um, have this more specific background coloring applied and it's not applying there. So that's something to keep in mind. And I've given the entire body an ID of SP so that I can kind of get rid of that problem um, just by putting the ID in front, which will make it automatically more specific than uh, any number of other rules I've got in the past. So now when I refresh, these will turn green as well because they are direct children of this div. Um, now if I were to, for example, um, come in here, um, these are paragraphs that are children of a block quote, which are children of a div. So if I made it like this, um, this would be find a paragraph which is a direct child of a block quote. Refresh and now these are all turning green. Um, but if I set it to a paragraph which is a direct child of a div and refresh, they won't be green because they're actually, they are a descendant of this div, but they're not a direct child because there's this block quote in between. So that's how, uh, that's how the syntax for this works. Minimize this.